Kenyan Deputy President William Samoy Ruto visited President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni in Uganda and Kenyans got very very confused what is happening and there's more there's some information which was not widely made available to Kenyans and it has something to do with the land that has now been earmarked to build the William Ruto Leadership Institute at the Makerere University. It is very shocking and yet perplexing information and we'll come to that in a bit. But first, two pieces of very good news. Now it will be Christmas in a few days and all investigative reporters are out there in the village enjoying their families. Until the new year, newspapers are going to be very thin on information. Many YouTubers and channels that you rely on for information are on holiday at the same time you are. Now, of course, this doesn't make sense because usually when they're at work and you're at work, you're busy. I don't want to say you're hustling, yeah, because that word has lost meaning in Kenya. It's true meaning, yeah, in English. My point is, most of you hardly have the time to catch up with this information, to take in these uh, videos on YouTube, to catch up on these channels, because you're extremely busy. And now when you have some time in your hands, because it's the holiday season, those people supplying you with that information are also on holiday. <laughs> anyway, the good news is that here on this channel, starting today, we are on overdrive. We are not on holiday. We are going to have our holidays late yeah, in the season, early January probably, if at all. Expect more videos, more analysis yeah, from yours truly. I pledge to try my best to make sure that after you're full of that roast chicken and roast uh, meat, nyamachoma, you will not get bored. Yeah, you'll be able to share some very interesting videos with your friends and family over this festive season. I'm going to try very hard to make that as interesting as possible and as revealing as possible for you. Great news, I'm sure. Not to mention my very dear, very dear friends and brothers and sisters out there in the diaspora lonely in a foreign country very far away from home this is the time when most feel homesick well i'm here yeah and i'll try my best yeah to help you feel very much at home as if you're already back in kenya you can thank me immediately <laughs> not later Anyway, good news number two. I am sure you've heard of the expression, there is nothing new under the sun. And of course, it's from the Holy Bible. It means that if you are currently passing through some very serious family crisis, those parents or those people you really admire and believe they never faced any crisis that they could not handle, have actually passed through the same thing. Yeah, if you did a bit of digging, you'd find out that. And they overcame. And if you are somehow able to find out how they overcame, you'd not only be inspired, but you'd get an idea or two about how to overcome what you're going through at the moment. Bottom line, according to that verse in the Bible, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that will happen that has never happened before. And people went through it. Yeah, some better than others. But people crossed that bridge or that flooded river yeah, if you're in Kenya. What am I driving at? The current very difficult times Kenyans are passing through at the moment, not my words, passing through yeah, because we'll never get stuck, has happened many times before. Take the American Great Depression, for instance, and don't worry, I'm not going to bore you. I'm talking practical things. It was very common yeah, during those hard times to see a very smartly dressed man, designer suit, very good shoes, everything impeccably dressed. 
But if you looked at the man more closely, you'd find out that he was starving. He had not had a meal for a number of days. It was also very common yeah, for very rich, well-known people yeah, to jump from the top floor of some building. Yani, suicide zilikuwa nyingi. And while all this was going on, there were some people, not very many, but there were some people who were in the process of making their family fortunes. Individuals who made fortunes, because that was in the 1930s, that their families, extended families, relatives, descendants, are still enjoying today. The mystery of what those few people did, yeah, and what can actually be applied today, yeah, because that was a long time ago, there are a few things which have changed, is very well documented and explained in simple language in my set of videos, How to Prosper in a Gloomy Economy. Very riveting, game-changing stuff, yeah, if I can say so myself. And you can see the information you need, yeah, to be able to get hold of this amazing, game-changing documentary immediately. You can see the information on your screens right now. Yeah, just send a blank email to that email address. Anyway, back to Deputy President William Samoy Ruto in Uganda. And let us start with the information that most Kenyans do not have. Yeah, or rather very few Kenyans have. The land on which the William Ruto Leadership Institute is going to be put up on at the Makerere University had already been earmarked yeah, to build, wait for this one, former President Kibaki's presidential library. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, Makerere academics are asking, why Kibaki was at Makerere? William Ruto has never studied at Makerere. So, they're asking, what are you people doing? What is this? He ninini. Right, let us break it down and get some answers. Point number one, which I've repeated on this channel time and time again, I hope it's not getting boring <laughs> to some of you regulars. And the point is this, when politicians meet for a photo opportunity, be very, very afraid. And don't waste your time if you want to understand what is happening, listening to what they say at that photo opportunity. Because they are bound to discuss the weather. Or in this case, farming. <laughs> Bear in mind that we live in an age where we have very good communication. You can even have a teleconference. Yeah, see the person you're talking to and they see you. And if what you have to say is technical or needs to be put in writing, you can shoot them an email or chat on a secure network. Yeah. But in this case, the very busy deputy president went all the way to Uganda to meet Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. In my view, the main objective yeah, of this particular visit was maximum publicity. Publicity for the Kenyan public, for consumption of the Kenyan public? I don't think so. Publicity for Ugandans, yeah, and especially those who sympathize with that great Ugandan called Bobby Wine? I doubt. Publicity targeted at Tim Keleweke? I don't think so. So, this show was supposed to be targeted at who exactly? Now, let me just give you a very simple example. Yeah, you have a new girlfriend and you go to this social gathering yeah, and you're sure yeah, that uh, she's into you. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, she meets some old friend, a man. And she screams and then hugs this man very passionately and for a very long time. And you start asking yourself, he message Nyangu. <laughs> but what you don't know 
and what you have not seen is some guy sitting at a corner somewhere in the room yeah who has been observing your girlfriend very carefully and you get even more confused standing there because after that your girlfriend holds on to you very tightly yeah and gives you an introduction of the century yeah she says something like this man ay yeah 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 he's so close to me he is my everything he is the soulmate i told you about the soulmate i've been looking for during this long frustrating life of mine something like that and so you get very confused but meanwhile at that corner that man who was sitting there is ordering a double of some very strong drink <laughs> message imefika now about 2 years ago 2 and a half years ago in club 1999 i published a sensitive video about the relationship between Yoweri Kaguta Museveni and William Samoei Ruto and in that sensitive video i said some things that looked very unlikely at that time in my view this visit was about a simmering problem or crisis with some foreign power and the whole idea was to hit two birds with one stone send a very clear message to that guy seated at the corner of the room and at the same time have a very private conversation yeah that would probably stretch into a third party on teleconference or a third party who was there yeah, but did not appear in the photos did not come anywhere near the photo opportunity yeah but joined the two gentlemen in a meeting later you see sometime in late 2012 early 2013 william samoy ruto yeah who was then nothing in fact who was then in a very serious crisis struggling against some very serious case yeah put up against him at the international criminal courts at the hague visited yoweri mseveni and yoweri mseveni ended up playing a very key role in solving william samoy ruto's problems to put it bluntly william samoy ruto would never would not be the deputy president of the republic of kenya today had it not been for what yoweri mseveni did for him and i repeat it would never have happened some of the following yoweri mseveni's government has been very clear on its policy on gays yeah, and homosexuals they have been prosecuted yoweri mseveni has dealt very brutally and very ruthlessly against patriot bobby wine how have the americans responded the worst that has happened is a slap on the wrist on the seven yeah but basically they have ignored yeah the human rights violations going on in uganda even today contrast that to what has happened to tanzania yeah tanzania is also very harsh against gays we have seen for the first time in tanzania very serious human rights violations the response of the americans travel advisories against tanzania yeah america has warned its citizens not to travel to tanzania or to travel to tanzania at their own risk and in these advisories they have even thrown in something that is laughable to anybody who understands tanzania they have said that tanzania is at high risk of a serious terrorist attack without going into the details which i've done here before in previous videos let me just summarize it very quickly the truth is tanzania is not immune to terrorist attacks it's not however the word high risk <laughs> is uh, i think uh, too much and in any case which of the two countries kenya and tanzania which of the two countries is at a higher risk of a terrorist attack kenya of course but last time i checked no americans have been warned from traveling to kenya no 
but they have been told Tanzania ah uh-uh, ah uh-uh, don't go there muskanyagi uko bottom line welcome to international politics and bear in mind that your weary kaguta mseveni remains the blue eyed boy of washington now there's a lot more info here yeah, which uh, i cannot go into right now but i suggest you catch club 1999 in fact what i'm going to do i'm going to repost that sensitive video in club 1999 and it is very easy to be a member of club 1999 yeah just use the information and the details you see on your screens right now and you'll become a member pup and you'll get into the nitty gritty and the entire fascinating and very amazing story yeah that is uh, this you were seven and america issue but back to today's topic yeah it seems that the very eventful yeah year that 2019 has been yeah and current political developments in our country have taken their toll on the thinking of foreign powers and please please don't give me that waste of the cow of kenya is a sovereign independent state yeah we don't rely and we don't act according to foreign powers and their wishes or america does not interfere in the running of other countries we only advise just like anybody else <laughs> wake up wake up my brother or sister and by the way to make it worse the guy seated inside the white house right now is all about the interests of the americans fast and everything and anything must fast be in the best interests of the united states of america now i can hear some of you reminding me that president trump has recently been impeached what does that even mean no president in the history of the united states has been impeached to the extent of leaving office no way and remember the senate where this issue is going to next is dominated by the republican party those are the guys yeah at least most of them firmly in trump's corner but even in the very very unlikely yeah but admittedly still possible case that he will be impeached out of office you can be sure that president trump has not stopped exercising his executive powers yeah waiting for the result of the impeachment no way he is still the president and is still implementing his policies now it stands to reason that since deputy president william samoe ruto was the chief negotiator for the uhuru ruto presidency yeah that the deal must have extended yeah to a ruto presidency you know this was not a small thing that ruto achieved yeah in 2012 2013 because you'll remember we had very senior american officials state department folks tell us very clearly choices have consequences they told kenyan voters in non certain terms elect these guys and we're out of here so do you think it was a small matter yeah for the americans to go back on their word <laughs> you were kaguta mseveni moto ya kuotea mbali that's the man who was bang in the center yeah of uh, making the americans swallow yeah their own very strong words <laughs> yes they swallowed it because the engagement between the kenyan government and the american government during the uhuru ruto presidency so far has been at its highest ever yeah more than even uh, during the kibaki regime but clearly it now seems the americans are getting jittery yeah and any casual observer of kenyan politics would also get jittery clearly the bbi seems to be a much better bet yeah for any foreign power that wants to keep their interests yeah running as usual in the region and it seems that this photo opportunity is telling the americans you go ahead with the bbi 
but then you'll have a problem yeah or there's a huge possibility that you'll have a problem in the region because although president uru kenyatta has warmed up considerably yeah to tanzanian leader president john pombe magufuli it seems that in uganda yeah Museveni is preparing for a Ruto presidency. And Museveni seems to have issues, has always had issues, with Raila Odinga yeah, and the Luo community. In my view, the Ruto visit to Uganda was in very bad taste. It's as if he's portraying a different center of power, a different and separate center of power in Kenya. It looks like the deputy president trying to outshine his boss, the president of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta. More so because of this business of the Ruto Leadership Institute. <laughs> and then you're wearing 70, as if to rub salt on wounds, declares that he is donating, yeah, or is pledging $100,000 towards the building of this institute. And he's doing this completely ignoring the people who should really matter in decisions like this. Yeah, the people at Makerere University, some of whom are asking the very simple but loaded question, is William Ruto the kind of role model yeah, we are looking for in a respectable, reputable university like Makerere University? Is he? And of course, that is a very dangerous question to ask in Uganda at the moment, yeah, because it may lead one in the direction of asking, is your very Museveni the kind of role model yeah, that Ugandans should look up to? <laughs> I don't think so. And I'm sure the vast majority of Ugandans agree with me. You know, in December 2015, Deputy President William Samuel Ruto who had then been in power as the deputy president for only two years, went to Uganda and accompanied Museveni to a campaign rally, where he told the crowd that Museveni is the man. He is the best person here to continue leading Uganda, Ruto told the people. The response to that yeah, by Ugandan opposition, leader Kiza Besinje, was very interesting. He said, and I quote, Ruto should be careful. He is hanging around a falling tree. It might fall on him. <laughs> In my humble view, those are very, very prophetic words that I believe will come to pass very soon. But that's my opinion. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja. Everything is gloomy in Kenya at the moment, especially the economy. And in many parts of the world, it is the same. So why should any sane person talk about making money in an economy where there's no money? Only a nutcase would do that, right? Actually, wrong. Because history has repeatedly shown us that the best time to make some serious money is when the economy is suffering. And the more the economy is suffering, the better your chances of making some serious money. To date, the American Great Depression of the 1930s still holds the record of producing the highest number of self-made millionaires ever in the history of the United States. People like this guy who produced the game of Monopoly, which somehow made people feel great yeah, because it involved handling dollar bills, which in real life in those days, they were not able to handle much. Okay, I understand you. Facts are great. But what does one do faced with the harsh realities of no money? Glad you asked. Because I've just completed producing an amazing documentary, a three-part documentary, titled How to Prosper in a Gloomy Economy. People on this channel are always talking about how my videos have changed their lives. But folks, 
this is the real deal. And what is more, there are no theories here, only very practical stuff. Let me just give you one example of what I mean. If you've ever lived in a foreign country, you know how difficult it is for a foreigner to start a business, even a small business. Well, I was once stuck in a foreign country with no money and I successfully started a business. And what's more, and I believe very important, without breaking any of the laws of that country. It can be done. Yeah, and people often make the big mistake of assuming that the most important component in a successful business is money. It isn't. It is simply a well thought out ideal idea coupled with a brilliant way of finding customers quickly and cheaply. That's it. My amazing documentary will hold your hand and help you find the ideal idea for where you are right now, even if it's your own country. Going through perhaps the most difficult economic times in its history. I want you to change your mindset right now and decide that every time you see the word problem, every time you see a news item with a problem, a serious problem people are facing, replace that word problem with the word opportunity. In my documentary, I not only tell you precisely how to do this, I give you practical, real life examples of how it was done before or how it has been done before by many, some of whom I helped and some of whom have never met me. So take action right away. It is okay to celebrate Christmas, but just make sure that you hit the year 2020 running. Because I know, you know, and I don't need to tell you, that those who will reach 2020 still waiting for something to happen and not doing anything about it are going to have a very difficult 2020. The full documentary costs only $54 or 5,400 shillings. But if you want to order only one part of the documentary at a time, which you can, it will cost you only $19 per part. And I've already told you it's in three parts. And there's more, yeah, if you order all three parts together, I will throw in the amazing ebooks, one on one brilliant business ideas that will thrive in Kenya or anywhere else in the world, and also how to get plenty of customers right away. I will send you those two ebooks completely for free. I highly recommend that you don't waste any time in making this investment in the year 2020 that will make all the difference.